Welcome to the Kingdom. I'm Chris, and this is Good Enough Gaming. Hello everyone, and welcome to this painting tutorial where I'm going to be painting a Tyranid warrior in the Behemoth High Fleet scheme. A buddy of mine wanted me to paint up a couple for his kill team, and so I figured why not make a video out of it. Now he primed them white before he gave them to me. Normally I would have primed these black, especially given that he's doing the behemoth scheme, but we'll work with what we got. So first thing, you gotta put a layer of Mephiston red over it for the skin. Because the white is so bright, even though this is a very heavy pigmented red paint, you're definitely gonna need two coats. The second coat will go on a lot faster because you don't have to get in all the nooks and crannies. But if you miss anything, don't worry, the white will show you what you're missing. Now once it dried off, um, I put on then a fairly thin layer of wash. I didn't gob it on there, but just make sure everything gets covered. And uh, since I was working on three of these at once, as always, by the time I was finished painting the last one, the first one was just about ready for the next coat. Now, once that wash is dry, we're gonna go back over with the Mephiston Red and paint over uh, some of the raised shell. It would almost be the equivalent of muscle, but big flat areas. What we wanna do is bring the color back up. Um, this is already going to be fairly dark and so we want to return some of that red so that when we add the highlights they won't look quite so so bright and out of place so all the big areas that are going to get lots of light on on the tail the the arms um, the rear leg muscles all that stuff go back over with the mephiston now we're going to use evil sun scarlet for our first bit of highlighting and you don't have to do a lot just on the edges of the chitin on the raised knuckles on any area that really sticks up. So there, there's that, that hip bone, but uh, I don't think I put any on the, the lower part of the leg. Maybe just a bit here and there to give a little more illusion of, of depth on the round area. So a little bit on the rib cages here, little bits here and there, um, not a whole lot. You're just trying to add a slight highlight to the existing red. Now for the very, very last bit of our highlighting with the red, we're gonna use Fire Dragon Bright and even more sparing than the previous color. So just little dots at the height of edges, at the tops of round areas, at, you know, anywhere where you have uh, the highest raised areas. So you're not gonna be using a whole lot of this, just a dot here or there. It's almost like the effect when you're painting metal, the one point where the light really beams off that single dot that you usually paint white on armor or something like that. That's what we're doing here. So now we're gonna do the next part that takes a lot of time, and that's the armor plating here. Just like with the red, this isn't a difficult paint scheme. There's only a total of maybe like 10, 12 paints. It just takes a lot of time. And so this is why normally I would have preferred to prime this model in black from the start because when you get to this part, you're just having to tidy up any areas where the red spilled over. But because it was based in white, I had to do, I think, two and almost three coats just to get this black to cover over all of that under white on the weapons, on the armor, all of that. Now I'm using the Vallejo black. It's a very, very flat matte black. Flat matte, it's one of the two. It's not like uh, Abaddon Black, which is very shiny. So you may want that because it gives a little bit more of an organic look to it. But two coats and you'll have it on there. So while I'm waiting for it to finish dry here, I'm gonna grab some purple real quick. You could also grab like a magenta, but not a red, because you got enough red. And we'll paint the tongue. Now once the tongue is done, here's the next part that takes a lot of time. Just be patient, find a video to watch, talk with some friends on the phone, listen to a book. Like I said, this is not a difficult scheme, it's just a tedious, time-consuming one. So if you find something else to do, it'll go a lot faster. So we're gonna get some Stick It On Scale Green, and we're gonna paint lines perpendicular to the edge of the chitin. And if you'll, you'll look there, just hashes, different sizes, slightly different thicknesses. Don't go too fast, because you'll start missing them, but don't go too slow and paint a big, solid line. Um, you'll get into a nice rhythm, and you're kind of edge highlighting, but you want it to be a very chopped up highlight and that gives that the illusion that this armor is growing unevenly it's not supposed to be smooth and sleek it's supposed to be very very rough so just make sure that your brush is typically perpendicular to the edge that you're painting nice lines some taller some thinner some fatter so you can see when I'm all done it's very very subtle but it is there and it's starting to separate the black 
from each layer of the armor. So now we come back and we add a little bit more uh, of a, a highlight to it. This time I decided to use Thunderhawk Blue. Um, I know the official GW paint scheme uses, I think it's Sotek Green. Uh, for me, that was really bright. I know some people might like that really strong turquoise contrast with the bright red, but I wanted the red to be the thing that sticks out the most. So I decided for the second layer of highlight to use Thunderhawk Blue. Do the same thing you did with the Stegodon Scale Green just don't completely cover that previous layer. So make the lines a little further apart, make them a little thinner. You should see all three colors if you look very closely, the black, then the Stegodon scale green, then the Thunderhawk blue. And that will give you this nice fading color that will give the armor the look, again, that it's rough, that it's cracking, that it's splitting, and that it's not growing perfectly even all over the body. So there's the armor finished. That's about 80% of it. All we have left is the weapons and the teeth. So let's get going on those. For the weapons, I decided to do a gray. Um, the armor is going to be that kind of dark blue. So you could do a brighter gray, uh, but instead I decided to go with Skaven Blight Dinge. The other one I could have possibly used was Eschen Gray. It's another very, very dark gray. This one's a little dirtier. It seems to have a little brown in there, whereas the Eschen Gray is a very, very clean looking gray. So it's totally up to you with preference. I decided to give it a shot with the Eschen Gray since the whole model is going to have this slightly grungier look to it. So using a very steady hand, paint all of the edges of all the blades, including that line down the middle. Now that's a very, very, um, very, not narrow, but it's a very flat kind of peak. So you have to just be very careful, paint with just the tip of your brush. If you go a little over, it's not going to kill you. Uh, we're, we're going for good enough here, remember? So get all the edges with the side of the brush. Be very careful when getting that line going straight down the center. Make sure the paint's nice and wet so that it flows off easily. And uh, believe it or not, we're just about finished. Because once we finish with that layer of Skaven Blight Dinge, we move on to the highlight of Dawnstone. And for this one, we're only going to highlight the sharpest edges or the edges that are on top. So for the big blade here, we're going to get that top layer, we're going to get um, the side of it, but we're not going to get the under part, and we're not going to get that line running down the middle. So when it's all done, it will give more of this three-dimensional effect that the blade is very sharp in some areas and a little more dull in others. So this whole model took me about an hour to do the whole thing. If you count drying time, maybe a bit, little bit longer, but since I was batch painting, I was still productive during that dry time. So it's quick, it's easy, just find something to do to make the time go by faster. And last of all, Rathkar's flesh for the teeth. If you wanted, you could go back over um, with a color like a, a bone color or a lighter ivory to highlight the teeth, but otherwise you could just leave it. And as you can see, it's good enough. <laughs> 